All right, in the last clip, we were able to enter in the formulas for total cost for each of these possible production options. In-house, buying from an external source, or getting a new machine and still producing in-house. Um, we also put in the formula for finding the break-even point, also known as the point of indifference between these options, make versus buy, and buy versus using a new machine. But we would like to know easily which option to choose based on the quantity produced. And if it's not that obvious, I guess we can go in here and try lots of different options on this input of quantity made and record what, what cost is at each case. But there's a tool in Excel called a data table that allows us to tell Excel a string of possible inputs for a set of formulas. And so the, the inputs that we're going to use for our data table is the quantity produced. So I'm going to label this column quantity. Um, we, we want Excel to keep track of the changes in cost for each of the three options. And so I'm going to make a column for each of the three options as well. Make, buy, and new M, new machine. All right. So first, we just need to make a list of uh, possible input quantities. And I'm going to use these break-even points as a guide so I can see what's happening to the costs before the break-even point, in between these two break-even points, and beyond this break-even point. And so I'm going to choose a first quantity of zero, then I'm going to jump up to a little bit before 10,000, say uh, 7,500. And I'm going to increase in quantities of 500 until I get to 10,000. I'm just going to click and drag this down to 9, 10. I'm going to go to about 11,000. That looks good. It's a bit off. All right. And now um, I'm going to choose some values around the 24,000 as well. So I'm going to maybe start at 22,000. to five and again click it and drag it down you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the cursor that I've already reached the last break-even point but I'm going to go a couple of thousand beyond that and now I've got a string of inputs that I want Excel to use when computing total cost for each option um, in the data table area you can kind of see that we've started making it here. I do skip this cell, but in this cell, the make cell, I'm going to reference the equation for total cost. I'm not going to type in a new equation. I'm just going to reference this equation. So I just type equals and I reference the cost equation that I want Excel to use. So when I make the data table, each of these input quantities, it's going to in the background, plug these values into this equation. And for each input, it's going to record what that equation is. All right. Um, I'm going to do the same for the buy column, reference the total cost location of the equation, and similar with the option two machine, I'm going to choose total cost. So. For each of these inputs, Excel is going to record what the total cost is in each case. All right? So now I've got the Excel is ready to create a data table now. Scroll down here. Um, data table is found on the data tab. And before I can choose a data table, I'm going to need to select from this empty cell to the edge of new machine total cost and all the way down to the bottom of the inputs. So I've got an empty cell, I've got the equations referenced and the inputs. And now 
on my screen, the what if analysis is in a really small button, but in your screen, depending how wide it is, you may have a larger button. So I'm going to click this, and I'm going to choose data table. It's going to bring up a dialog box. And it asks about the input cell. If you remember, um, our input cell is quantity produced. That's what the inputs are going to be. And when it asks what the row input cell or the column input cell is, it's asking where the original input is. And it's here. But the question is, do we put it as a row input cell or a column input cell? The easy way to remember is, are the inputs in the data table, are they in a column or are they in a row? In this case, the inputs are in a column. And so the input cell is going to be a column input cell. And there's the input cell right here. I choose the original input that these equations use. And now I'm ready to create the, the data table. I select OK. And there's the data table already made for us automatically.